trade down we talked about. How about Cam Jordan coming out of the Pac-10? Pete Carroll played again. Uh, I think coached some games when he was a young pup there at Cal. He could be an intriguing fit. Yeah, I mean, Seattle just has so many needs. There's so many different directions they could go. And in the final mock draft, I went Jimmy Smith. I, I don't think Pete Carroll would necessarily be scared off by Jimmy Smith. He definitely dealt with some <laughs> diva-ish guys when he was at USC. Uh, and, and guys uh, that had some issues. So I don't think he'd be scared off by Jimmy Smith. And they could use a corner. Uh, they could use a guy like Danny Watkins, the interior of their offensive line is in shambles. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's a possibility. I think defensive end, defensive tackle. I've heard Marvin Austin in the mix, maybe Muhammad Wilkerson. Uh, the Seahawks just have so many options, and that's why I think the trade down works so well for them because uh, no matter no matter who's available where they where they trade down to, they're still going to be able to address one of these positions. Yeah, so the pick is in for the Eagles. We'll see if it's creamy like we think. The Eagles have definitely, I mean, I think both of us, Scott, remember at the Senior Bowl, them just rushing up to these offensive linemen. I mean, they, they were very eager to talk to these guys, and that seems like an Andy Reid type of direction to go. So unless unless they really want to bypass the Jimmy Smith issues... Sick of creamy. Sick of creamy here. Hmm. <laughs> get get else trying. See anybody we know? <laughs> Not yet. Look for Cecil or Garda. Garda Chad's there. Chad's there, that's right. I... Boy, I can't believe we're already on the 23rd pick. I, didn't it get one pretty quick last year? It wasn't too bad last year. Yep. I never complained about there being more draft. But yeah. Boom, 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 boom. And for those who are interested, I'm going to be writing up tomorrow morning early. I'm going to get up and start writing my initial thoughts on some of these picks. I'll, next month I'll be doing the the in-depth team-by-team reviews, but I'm going to write a, a good paragraph on each one of the picks tomorrow morning and give some initial thoughts and impressions, so watch for that. And I'm, Late morning it'll be up. And I'll be putting the stream up on YouTube as well tonight, so um, this all of this will be up on YouTube for if people want to sit and watch, I guess, all morning tomorrow. But after, this dra after the draft is over, I am hitting the set, because I have, since 5 a.m. yesterday, I've got three hours yeah. of sleep total. I am a... Uh, I'm running on adrenaline now, but, so I'm going to sleep, try to get, I don't know, five, six hours of sleep, then I'll get up at 5 a.m. and get typing. Hmm. See, that's, see, that's what I like, though, about this new format, too. I mean, there's so much more time that I can do that. We have all day tomorrow to, to dissect what happened, look at what's going to happen. We're going to have a podcast tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, we, we were able to have that draft day extravaganza podcast today that we wouldn't be able to have in the old format, so I really like so, it. All right, so, real quick. Oh, it looks like this pick's coming up, and we'll talk about this. But I got the trades in as well. All right. Oh, interesting. This guy gets it here. Oh. Danny Watkins, there he is. Danny Watkins, the firefighter himself. No right. Gabe Karimi. Um, no, I, you know, I think it's an Andy Reid type of selection. Get a guy they're trying to win now with Michael Vick. I don't think it's that bad of a pick. No, I, I, like I said, I think Danny Watkins won the safest picks in the draft. And I'm not surprised at all to see the, the Eagles go in the trenches. Yeah. Well, the the Chiefs got an early third-round pick. They got number 70 overall by moving down. So that means the Browns have two picks tomorrow, both in the second round, as Deep Threat's telling us in the chat. And the Chiefs picked up an extra third-rounder by moving down to 27. All right. 
So Saints are on the clock. Uh, you had Ingram going here in your mock. I think I had Wilkerson going here in my mock draft. Cam Jordan still on the board. Um, the, what? Uh, who else are we looking at still up there? And I mean, put Ingram there. I, I mean, I definitely think it could happen. Yeah. Uh, I don't discount it because, I, like I said, the analysis. If anybody knows the value of having depth at running back, it's the Saints because of all the injuries they had last year. And yeah, they got uh, they got Pierre uh, Thomas. Yeah, they got Chris Ivory. Reggie Bush, but the old saying is if you have a lot, you often have nothing. I mean, they don't have that bell collar that they can really yeah. rely on. But, I, you know, I'm looking at they need defensive line help. And Daquan Bowers, Cam Jordan, Muhammad Wilkerson all still on the board. You're going to bypass that for a running back when you can take take a guy uh, in the mid-rounds uh, to add to that core. I just don't know if, if I'm New Orleans, if that's what I need. If I need to pump up my offense more, has that been the problem? I think it's been the pass rush. I think it's been um, the defensive line. And that's what you should address because the value isn't bad here for these players. Well, and, and the Saints, though, I mean, look at last year. They didn't necessarily need a quarterback, but they took Patrick Robinson for value. I mean, yeah. the running back might not be their biggest need, but... But, uh, I mean, Bowers and Jordan are, are, have to be solid value here, too. Well, if Depending on the medical. Jordan, the Jordan situation, again, is he... Do they view him as a fit for the 4-3? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I certainly think he can do it, but... Some teams may not. Yeah, and uh, with Bowers, you have the need. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's the issue, though. What a story this is of Danny Watkins. Yeah. It, I mean, it took the long road to get there. And two Baylor players taken in the first round. When's the last time that's happened? Yeah, and then they had the number two overall pick a couple years ago. Yeah. Jason Smith. Powerhouse. But yeah, I mean, Danny Watkins, for anybody who doesn't know his story, I mean, this is a kid... He was a firefighter. He was going to college, to junior college, to be a firefighter. And one of the football coaches said, "Hey, <laughs> you're a big guy. Why don't you come out and play some football?" And he turns into this big time JUCO recruit. He goes to to Baylor. He ends up replacing Jason Smith at left tackle. Played there for a couple of years, and now he's a first round pick in the NFL draft. Very unlikely story. Yeah, I. I you know, I like the pick, and I think it says that the Eagles are in are in a win now mode. That they're this is their year. I think I think it's what this kind of shows me. I'll be surprised if they don't address another need in the second round um, because of that. So they're trying to get kind of instant impact guys. Uh, just a question from Chatham Yankee fan: Is Bauer's injury that bad? Is, you know, is that why he's fallen this far? I don't think we know for sure, but the fact that he's down here at 24. And, you know, very interestingly, I think he could fall some more. Has to tell you that the medical does not look good for Daquan Bowers. Right. I think the proof is in the pudding. And, I mean, up leading up to the draft, the kind of speculation, well, is it really as bad as people are making it out to be? Well, I think, they, I think we have our answer to that because here we are at, at number 24 and he's still available. And I think there's some information today that it was bone on bone in his knee, which is one of those conditions that you just can never fully rectify. It's knocked a lot of people out of the league. And a lot of continue to play with that pain if they have that pain tolerance. So if it's something that's only going to affect them for one year, i definitely take the shot here and take a redshirt year with some of these playoff caliber teams. Um, similar, and not that Derek Morgan, you know, had an injury going in, but what ended up happening with Tennessee and Derek Morgan, uh, you know, I take the shot at Daquan Bowers this late, if that's the issue. If it's something that's going to affect his whole career and may shorten it, I, who knows how far he could drop. He could drop past the second round. Well, and I think this is a case, too, where you have to start kind of questioning his decision to come out early. Now, obviously, if his knee is that bad off, it's, it's not going to be any better here from now, but at least he wouldn't have been coming off a major injury, assuming he played another season and, and didn't get hurt again. But he entered the draft knowing he had a current knee injury that he was probably going to have to undergo surgery for. He wasn't healthy throughout the draft process and went to support workouts. I mean, if, if he was able to, if he did, wasn't just come off knee surgery and was able to work out up to his ability, and I think we agree that had he not just had the surgery, he would have worked out much better. Even then, with this medical concern, I think teams would have might have been a little more willing to overlook it. But I think when you combine those two factors, I think it just leads to even more trepidation among the teams. 
because he, he did perform so poorly when they finally did get to see him. Right, you know, and, and as as they should. So the picks in for the Saints, I'll still be surprised if it's not a defensive lineman, either Jordan or Bowers. I, I don't think they're going to go Ingram here. I, I, I really feel like Sean Payton likes the, that running back core. He likes Ivory. They re-signed Pierre Thomas. It kind of tells me they'll look later for that pick. So I think it's got to be one of these two DNs. Uh, well, I, I like the two DNs you mentioned. I think Ingram's in the mix, and then I'd also throw Muhammad Wilkerson's name yeah. in the, the hat as well. I've heard they like him. Sure, so, you know, I think he's going soon. Four names I'd, I'd uh, throw in there. I mean, I keep, I, I mean, like I say, Bowers it just depends on the medical. If they pass him out, if they're not concerned about the medical, then I think he's a no-brainer here. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say Cameron Jordan. Yeah, I, I I agree with you there. I think again, we keep saying Cameron Jordan. Well, <laughs> gonna be right. well, this is going to be. A, let's get it done. I hope I hope that we're correct this time because he deserves to go in the top twenty-five. Uh, we're still waiting. Can we just throw something at John Gruden? Yes, it was probably Garda. Did you see his? <laughs> did you see he's sitting right in front of him? I don't think I have. Yeah, he's sitting like. Right up, he just posted a picture on Twitter. I, I should uh, I thought I copied the link. Apparently not. But he's right in front of the set. I think Mel dyed his hair. Wow, he's grayer last year. He's probably getting a little gray. There he is. Well, I, I think that's the sign. There you go. Yep, big <laughs> Cam Jordan. All right. Finally. Finally. Cam Jordan goes off board. Wow. Uh, I think this really upgrades that Saints defensive line. Uh, you put him at DN, you can move him around, and by signing Sean Rogers and getting someone like Cameron Jordan that can play the left end, you can move him inside if you want on third down to a three technique. I think they could really use him in a variety of different ways. And we're getting to the point here where you have to start wondering, I mean, is Daquan Bowers going to drop out of the first round? Oh, I think he could drop out of the first round very easily. He's running out of potential landing spots. we got a lot of three, four teams coming up here. Yeah, Baltimore's not touched them. Pittsburgh, Green Bay, New York. Um, Bears aren't taking a defensive end. No. So, he's running out of room. And that that's going to be the player, I guess, we'll be talking about tomorrow when he, if he falls out of the first round. Uh, it should be very interesting. I'm trying to think. <sighs> Other potential landing spots for him. I mean... At the top of round two? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to have to be the top of round two. I really can't think of a round one round team. Round two. Um, Take a chance on mm, see, that could Cleveland be. Browns at 37. Yeah, if Cleveland wants to keep doing that. Uh, consider him at number six a month and a half ago. Right. <laughs> so you can get him on the top of the second. That'd be good, you know. But if the medical is that bad, um, it could be even further. Now, see, that you will be interested. I'm trying to see if there's any other place maybe around. One. Maybe Seattle here. But other than that, there's not another place in round one where I think he can go. Atlanta has no, lived very no, traded up. Trade. Seattle, yeah. I Seattle mean, wants to move down. What's the trade market? I mean, it's the quarterbacks, right? I mean, that's, that's right. the value here. That, or not, well, not the value, but that's the enticing option that would entice somebody to, to trade. I don't know if there's anybody else on the board that teams are necessarily clamoring unless somebody wants to get a preview to get that last tackle. Yeah, and if Seattle stays for 25, I do not think they will take a quarterback. Chat room's asking Dalton or Mallet for Seattle here. I don't think that would be the pick. I think Jimmy Smith uh, could definitely be a possibility for for Seattle. Or maybe maybe you know maybe they like Bowers. This might be the last shot. Well, I had Jimmy Smith in my box, so I'm, I'm, I really think this could be a trade spot, though. Yo, I think it's a prime trade spot for some. If someone wants to move up for the QB, if someone really likes Mark Ingram, if you know Jimmy Smith, one of these players, if someone really likes them, and um, Adam Schefter also reporting that the Chiefs are trying to trade back from 27. So there you go. Chiefs, Chiefs, and Seahawks both trying to trade back. Yeah. Hey. Uh, well, I'm trying to think now. Now, which the, the, the question is, which of these teams that haven't got their quarterbacks yet that might want to trade up? I mean, I don't think the Buffalo Bills. No. I mean, if they were, I don't know how interested they are in a quarterback. I think they're happy with Cincinnati. Cincinnati, but does Cincinnati usually trade? No. They're really active. They're not, but yeah, you don't. I think they're they're so badly need a quarterback, 
if that doesn't work out. We don't think Arizona's going to do it. Um, Washington still needs one. I don't 